hello welcome back this video is going to be the continuation of the previous lesson under this topic we will see quantifiers occurring in combinations don't forget in our previous lesson we discussed the two types of quantifiers universal and existential quantifiers the symbol for universal is a upside down and existential is when the e is inv inverted to the right side to the left therefore in case of propositions containing two variables the two quantifiers may occur in combination for our x there exists y q of x y or we can say the four possible ways of combination will be for all x for all y q of x comma y there exists x, there exists y, q of x, comma y, and there, for all x, there exists y, q of x, comma y, and there exists x for all y, q of x, comma y. These are the four possible way of combination. Better to see an example, and we will see the truth values of a proposition. The first one here, it says, suppose you have an open proposition involving two variables. Let's say p of x, comma y is such that x equal x plus y is equal to 5 okay the proposition is p of x comma y and this property says x the sum of these numbers must be what 5 and those numbers must be from the set of natural number don't forget the domain so if we are asked to find the truth values of there exist x and there exist y such that the property p of x y uh, is satisfied statement wise how, how to say it uh, there is some x some x or some natural number x and some y so that the property P of x comma y is satisfied let's say this is the way how to how to say it can you find two natural numbers okay because there is x and there is y, there is y. can we find two numbers x and y from the natural numbers and add up and give us five of course those numbers are one plus four and two plus three both each of the numbers are, as you see here a natural number when you add them they will give you five so there exists x and there exists y appears together means uh, mostly uh, it's near to p2 because we are going to try to find like one case which makes the whole statement true for each so that's going to be true the second example here it says there exists x for every y which will be added and give you 5 that means there is a number x we can fix a number x which will be added with every natural number and give you 5 can you find one number x because there exists x it says there exists x for every y y is free this time for every y it should work y is x and y are natural number but can you find one natural number which will be fixed here and always added with every natural number and give you 5 there is no for example if you fix one one plus every natural number will it give you five no it doesn't give us five it can't the only number that i have to insert here it is four because we are discussing about natural number so we cannot fix okay we, or we cannot find a, a number x which will be added with every natural number y and the sum must be five uh, that's going to be false the next example says for every x we can find y okay for every x means i can take any natural number for every x for every natural number there is some number y which will be added always give you five for example in place of natural number for example if i take in case of natural number one i can find a number and give you five that's four if i take two i can find a number which will be 3 okay for every x means here I'm free 
x is free this time because for every x but when you come to the second addend there exists y means you can find a number y or you can find a natural number another natural number which will be combined and added and give you 5 still now we are getting what if I take 3 yes still if I take 4 still what if I take 5 because x is free for every x means for every natural number we can find another natural number and give uh, the sum will be 5 doesn't work 5 plus 1 will give you 5 it must be 0 but 0 is not a set of natural number so for every x okay we cannot find uh, a combination or a number a natural number which will give you 5 if I someone can take 100 100 plus what number will give you 5 because x is free you can take any natural number if I take 100 100 plus what will give you 5 it should be negative 95 actually but negative 5 negative 95 is integer it's not natural number so it doesn't work therefore uh, this proposition also falls the next example it says for every x and every natural x and every natural number y will be added and give you 5 it means for every x and for every y the property p of x comma y will be satisfied means every natural number x plus every natural number y will be added and give you 5 like you can take any number here 3 here you can take any number like if i take 100 3 plus 100 it doesn't give you 5 that means every natural numbers will be added and give you 5 no it doesn't work so mostly for all x for all y is near to be false and there exists x there exists y is near to be true there are some exercise which can be solved and you can practice it here uh, if you try to see the first question it says given a q of x comma y such that x is equal to y and h of x comma y uh, such that x is greater than y determine the truth value of each of the following assuming the universe to be the set of natural number the domain is a set of natural number now the first one a says there exists x or there is a natural number x for every y to be equal like you can fix a natural number x and it's always equal to every natural number is there a natural number can you find one natural number which will be equal to with every natural number because there exists x means you can find one natural number which will be equal to with every natural number y no it doesn't work if you go to b every natural number x and every natural number y okay the first number that you take is greater than the second one it works it says for every x and for every y h of x comma y means take any natural number x and take any natural number y always the first number will be taken is greater than the second one no it doesn't work again because we are taking randomly for every x for every y the first taken might be bigger or the first taken might be smaller we don't know and c also it says every natural number taken x and y also always th the two numbers are always equal we don't know about this also because randomly will be taken x y also so every natural number taken so this is also false so better to practice uh, with this exercise and let's go to one exam type question it is almostly uh, it is asked in exams so let us see this uh, question together the question says if x and y are non-negative integers what are non-negative integers integers but not negatives that means whole numbers 0 1 2 3 it continues these are non-negative integers then which of the following is not true a choice a says for every x there is y that means y greater than x square minus 1 that means for every x means you can take any x here for example I can take uh, 10 square it and subtract 1 10 square minus 1 now x is free so we can take any number I took x 10 10 square is 100 100 minus 1 will be 
it is uh, 99 can I find now a number y that number y must be bigger than this result yes because y is also a natural number so for every x means you can insert any number x here square it and subtract 1 can you find another number from the natural number which makes I mean, which will be greater than the result that is true for example bigger than 99 is there a natural number of course because the y is now uh, we are trying to fix I mean we are trying to fix the y after we take x any number but think of it like you can insert in place of x any number we insert in we go to result 99 then we are trying to find or we are trying to search a natural number which is bigger than 99 yes for example I can take 100 or 1000 what if I insert 0 here 0 square is uh, 0 0 minus 1 is negative 1 can you find a natural number or non-negative integers which is uh, greater than negative 1 obvious every of them not only one many therefore this property works true it's not false it is true because for all x square it and subtract one the result from that result you can find a number which is bigger than that true because uh, non-negative integers are you know unlimited they are un infinite so whatever the number whatever a big number we take in place of x and square and subtract one you can find uh, the successor of that number because the successor of this result will be larger than uh, the outcome therefore this is true what about choice b let us see b says you can find a natural number i mean we can find non-negative integer one neg non-negative integer because there is x there is x means fix a number x here you can take one number x or you can find one number x square it subtract one and that sum or that outcome or that result always it has to be uh, smaller than any natural number because the y is free this time for all y it is there is x for all every y means can you find a number x which will be inserted here and square and subtract one then finally that result always it has to be smaller than every whole number uh, the minimum number that they can take in place of x is a zero because from the negative integers the smaller number as you see here it is zero let us insert zero and check zero square minus one zero square minus one is negative one so now every whole number is it greater than negative one definitely that is true because y is free now it says there exists x for every y this proposition or this property uh, works yes that is true we have got it already what is that the number zero we fix a number zero if you square zero and subtract one the result is a negative outcome so this negative outcome is always smaller than every whole number that is true when you go to choice C it says there exist X for every Y okay uh, no it says there exist y for every x let us correct it because it's the same as this one the same as b there exist y for every x we can find a number y which is always smaller than or less than or equal to every uh, whole number x squared and subtract one can you find or can you find a number y which is always smaller the minimum number that I can take here again uh, it is 0 in place of y 0 is less than or equal to any whole number square minus 1 because it should be it says the property it says for there is y there is y it is always smaller than I like y is less than or equal to the square of every natural number or whole number minus 1 what if I take in place of x also 0 0 square minus 1 because maybe it will make this smaller number square and minus 1 it may make false otherwise every number if I take larger number for example if I take 4 4 square 16 minus 1 is 15 obvious so raise 0 is less than 15 it works so uh, as I take x in place of x any larger number the 0 is smaller than uh, that outcome obvious true what if I take 0 the outcome will be 0 is less than or equal to negative 1 it doesn't work here because 0 it cannot be less than negative number because x is free so it says 
there exists y that y is smaller that means when we are thinking of y is smaller number that we have to take here as much as possible the smaller number from the whole number that is zero already taken i can't take uh, another number which is less than zero because it's whole number already non negative means whole numbers so in place of y i fix the zero so this zero is it always smaller than or equal to for for the free x square minus one x is free remember for every x means any x can be taken so randomly when we take we took zero again because when i take the smaller of x again and square it and subtract one if it works for the larger always it works because when i'm increasing the x num the x value it will be squared in minus one it's getting larger and larger it will be uh, obvious it will be larger than the zero but i took again at the same time simultaneously i take zero in place of x also zero square minus one this makes false so in, in case of uh zero on both sides taken the statement will be false so that is not true so the answer will be c but what about d what does he say d says uh for there exists x and there exists y this property works of course for example here in place of uh, x x is free that's why i took zero but can i find another number other than zero which makes this statement true? why not i can take bigger number in place of x like one number so there exists x and there exists y this property uh, works true because mostly there exist and if the two quantifiers existential quantifiers actually two existential quantifiers if they are combined mostly true two uh, universal quantifiers comes together mostly it's false so the answer will be c uh, these are the lesson and the questions that i prepared better to practice with the previous exercise the remaining questions better to do it when you have any difficulty you can write on the comment space thank you for watching don't forget to subscribe like and share